As you can see, this video is going to cover the differences between what an alias does and what a function does and basically when to use them. Now I'm not going to go into these in too much depth because the video could end up being an hour long, but I'm mainly going to cover when you should use an alias and when you should use a function in terms of when you're calling either one of them with arguments or um, when you grow from the case where you use an alias and then you want to start making it more complicated and you should actually turn it into a function. So this video is told from a bash perspective and other shells will probably be a little bit different but I think the concepts are mostly the same at least in uh, born shell derivatives. To paraphrase the bash man page. It says that aliases allow a string to be substituted for a word when it is used as the first word of a simple command. And then a function is an object that is called like a simple command and executes a compound command with a new set of positional parameters. They kind of sound the same and a lot of people think of them the same. I think most people end up learning aliases first because they will have some common aliases where they it's they basically overloaded a command to uh, always use a certain option like you know always set ls to be color equals auto. Um, another common one is where the on the root account rm has been alias to rm dash i so that when you remove something it interactively asks you if if you really want to remove it or not um, so I'll show you how that works real quick so now it's asking me but if I unalias that rm and then remove it it doesn't ask me so basically the way an alias works is when you let me uh, alias this again. When I go to type in rm and then type in a file name, when when I hit enter, the first thing that bash does is it goes through the line and it looks for aliases at the beginning of the line. And it expands those out into whatever string is after, you know, is in the alias definition. It doesn't really execute what's here it just expands it out so that this string becomes this string so there's no actual other processing that's done really the only other processing that could be done is if uh, it's possible to actually alias you know if you have like sudo and you have an extra option or something if you put a space or a blank they say in the man page they say a blank if you put a blank at the end then any alias after that alias will also be expanded. Um, so the most common thing I could be think of using this with is the sudo command, where you cut, where you put sudo before, you know, an, another potential alias like rm. Um, so that's about the only type of processing that really happens with an alias. So some people get confused and they start to run something like you know they overload their cd command let's um you know they say cd and they make it so that it always uses the dash p and maybe they put like dollar one and they think that that positional argument is actually going to work and for the most part it does when they actually go to you know now we have an alias called cd I'm sorry there now we have an alias called cd and uh, when I go to run it hey it works and you might be tricked into thinking that well this actually works you know I put dollar one in here and it actually does its job but 
it's not actually expanding the dollar one, it's expanding the dollar one into nothing because aliases don't actually take arguments. And this is only working simply because you put your directory name at the end of what the alias becomes. So when you type in, let me go back, when you type in CD music, this is actually getting expanded to CD space dash P and then a blank where the dollar one is. So dollar one gets turned into nothing because there is no positional argument really being made there. It's actually, I think it's the dollar one from when bash was initiated as your shell and that's set to nothing. You can just say, you know, echo dollar one and that's actually set to nothing. Dollar zero is actually bash, you know, the name of the shell when it was executed. So this is kind of a higher level. These positional parameters here are kind of a higher level that you can't actually access. So don't worry about that part of it. The point is, is that aliases can't take positional parameters. And I think a lot of people get tripped up on this. I, I think I even got tripped on it a long time ago when I started learning it. And I said, why, you know, why doesn't this work? So when you start to get to the point where you want to have these kind of arguments, like say, you know, um, you go to run something like this, my app search, and you want to do something a little bit more complicated. Okay, so this is basically an apt um, search where it puts the, you know, whatever argument you give it at the beginning of the line, and then it passes it through this egrep, which will color code the first part uh, before the dash. So when you normally do an apt cache search for, like, let's say PHP, uh, all this stuff that's before the dash is, you know, you can look up this list and it's kind of maybe a little bit hard to see everything. So passing it through like this, well actually it'll color code the first part of it. It's just a quick and dirty way to color code stuff. Um, so you run this and you'll think, uh, you'll think, oh, I can put the positional parameter then there. And then you go to run it and you put in like PHP. And what, why isn't it working? And it's not working because it's not putting PHP here, it's actually putting PHP out here. And so what this command becomes is like this. Well, it's actually, okay, it's actually becoming that. And so see, you get the same error. And so basically egrep is trying to run against the, you know, it's trying to not take standard input, but it's trying to actually egrep a file called PHP which doesn't exist or if it did exist in your current directory you might get weird results like why did it suddenly egrep the file you know the same the a file in the directory instead of the output from the app, app cache search so this is why you shouldn't use alias you know uh, as far as once you get beyond simple replacements and trying to use um, positional args. You need to start using functions. So a, a function in the same way um, would be like you, well for, okay first the first thing to understand is that if you're going to upgrade an alias to a function you need to actually unalias it first. Otherwise when you try to define the function if you don't use the keyword function before it it will um, not be able to define it because it'll try to replace whatever the function name is with the the thing before your function call and it'll get all messed up. So even if you use the keyword function before it, you're going to end up continuing to use the alias. Um, so you need to unalias that first. And then we will define the function 
functions can pretty much be defined like this. So you give it a function name and then uh, open close parentheses, which just it's a way of saying that this is going to be a function. Open curly braces and close curly braces are kind of a traditional uh, way of defining the stanza of the function. In other words, all the commands that you're going to be running in the function. Um, and then you have to put a semicolon at the end of it. So functions, now functions are able to take uh, positional arguments like $1, $2, $3, and so on. Um, so when we run this, my app search PHP, it, yay, it does the right thing. So, well, almost the right thing. Probably put a space in there like that. Okay, there, man, yeah, there we go. Well, you get the point. Anyways, oh, I'm looking up here. Uh, so, that's how you can use a function in positional parameters. And hopefully this will explain to you um, when to use an alias and when to use a function. Again, like I said, I'm not going too deep into this. I'm mainly wanting to clear up uh, people's misconception about positional arguments and aliases and why they don't actually work. So hopefully this will give you a, a clear view of of how aliases work and how functions work, or at least how they're understood in terms of you know how the shell is interpreting them. Okay, check out other CLI Magic videos, and I'll see you next time.